If we add a third set to our Venn diagram, the same principle applies where we always want to begin in the middle and then we're going to work our way out. So this middle section indicates elements belonging to sets A and B and C. From there, this section here represents elements belonging to A and C but not B. So this is A and C. If we do not include B, this is part of the B circle, we have A and C but not B right in this section here. Likewise, this section here is elements belonging to B and C, so they're part of both B and C, but they are not including A. So this little section that belongs to the A circle is not included, we're just including this region here. And this one here indicates elements belonging to A and B, but not set C. A is this entire circle here. So this region in here refers to elements that are in A only. So they're A, but not B, but not C. Same thing with B. So this whole circle represents B. This section right here represents elements belonging to set B, but not A, but not C. And this section right here refers to C only, elements belonging to C but are not part of set A and are not part of set B. When conducting an internet search, if you use the word and, then the internet is going to be looking for all web pages containing A and B and C within them and these sites are going to show up. If you use the word or, then it's going to look for all web pages that contain this topic only or this topic only or this topic only or any combination of those topics. So let's pretend we surveyed everyone in the class and we currently have 30 students within the class. 20 have a pet dog, 15 have a pet cat, and eight have some kind of pet rodent. So I've gone ahead and labeled my intersecting circles with those letters. We have seven students with a dog and cat, five students with a dog and rodent, and then two students with a cat and rodent, one student has all three pets. I want you to now pause the video and see if you can take this information here and organize it into the Venn diagram and then resume the video and we'll compare what did you do to what should we have done and you can see if you're on the right track or if you made mistakes, that's okay. We're going to then correct them and look at why this is the way to go about this problem. All right, welcome back. So. We need to begin in the middle. So this middle section of the Venn diagram represents students who have all three types of pets. There is only one student who fits in that category, so we're going to put a one in there. We're now going to work our way out from the middle into these sections. So this section here would be rodent and cat only. So we can see that rodent and cat, that's two students, but rodent and cat is this whole piece here. So there's already one student in there, which means means that there is one student who has a rodent and cat only. Dog and rodent is five. So dog and rodent is this section here. There's already one student in here. We cannot count each student more than once. So that one student's already in there. That means there are four students in this section who have a dog and rodent only. And then we have seven students with a dog and cat. But again, dog and cat is this section here. We already have one student in there, which means there are six students who have a dog and cat only. And then we can see that we have 20 students in the dog category who have a pet dog. And again, remember, this is the dog category. So what you can do, sometimes people like to just put like a small little number 20 here just to help them organize themselves. So if we have 20 students that need to be in this green circle, we remove four, five, and six. So there's 11 students already in there. That means we're going to have nine students who have only a dog. We have 15 students in the cat circle. So this blue circle here represents all students who have a pet cat. So we can put a little number 15 here. And then we can see that we already have six, seven, eight students in there. So there are seven students who have only a cat. And then we have eight students with a pet rodent. And again, pet rodent, that's this whole red circle here. So I'm going to put a little eight here. This is just to help me organize myself. There's four, five, six students already in that circle. So there are two students who 
have a rodent only. And then we can always either erase or cross this off. This is just to help us get organized here. And then you want to go ahead and count what are the number of elements or number of students that we have in each of these sets and then see how does that relate to the number in our universal set. So if we add these all up, we actually get 30, which means that we have a complement of zero. And that's actually never happened before. I just made these numbers up. But typically you're going to end up with all of these numbers being less than 30, in which case the difference becomes that complement. So don't forget the complement. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and answer these questions. We're going to use our diagram to determine the number of students who. And I've written in here what this symbolic notation would look like for each of these written statements. The first one, we're looking for the number of students who does not have a cat. So this here is my cat circle. We're going to add up everything outside of that circle. So we've got 9 plus 4 is 13, 14, 15 plus 0. Don't forget the 0. We're going to have 15 students based on this Venn diagram who do not have a cat. In our next one, we're looking for the number of students who have a dog or cat but not a rodent. So dog or cat but not rodent. So that's like the bowl, that union symbol that contains all elements in dog or cat. So everything within the cat circle, everything within the dog circle, only counting each element once, but we are not including anything within this rodent circle. So if we take off everything in the red circle, that leaves us just with 7 plus 6 is 13 plus 9 is 22. So there are the 22 students who have a cat or dog, but not a rodent. The next one is similar, dog or rodent, but not cat. So again, dog or rodent, that's those two circles here. So this is like the bowl. But if we take off everything in the cat circle, it leaves us just with those three sections here. So we have 2 plus 4 is 6, plus 9 is 15 students that would fit into that category. And the last one is now and. So number of students who have dog and rodent, but not a cat. That's like that slap chop that comes in and cuts out the middle. So dog and and rodent, that's this section here, but if we do not include anything within the cat circle, we have four students only who have a dog and a rodent, but no cat. And one trick you can do, especially in the beginning, is you can actually copy this diagram multiple times and then physically highlight the regions that you're looking at just to make sure that you are only including what you are being asked for. And then if we go back to the question, because we are asked to determine the number, determine means show how we got those values. So I've just indicated what we've added together, including the complement, because if this was a number other than zero, that's going to impact our final answer. And then I've just shown which regions we are adding together this particular one, because we're just pulling that number, I just wrote down that value there. And to conclude, we're going to take a look at one last example where we're ultimately asked to determine how many, like all three dessert items, pie, ice cream, and cake. So we know that's that middle section here. This is normally where we begin and we work our way out. So if we have a triple Venn diagram and we're asked to find this middle section, we're going to begin by choosing a variable to represent that section. So this is going to represent the number of elements in that intersection piece. And then we're also told that we surveyed 100 people and they like one or more of the desserts. So if they like one or more, that means there is no complement. Everybody is choosing a dessert that they like. And I can go ahead and fill in the number in the universal set is going to be 100. All right, so we're going to now work our way out from the middle. And we are told that 62 people like cake. Now cake is this entire section here. So I'm going to put a little 62 out here just to help myself get organized. We're told that 74 people like pie. So pie is this entire section here. So I'm just going to put a little 74 by my pie. And then we're also told that 82 people like ice cream. And again, that's that whole circle. So I'm going to put a little 82 here. Then we're told six people like cake and pie, but not ice cream. So cake and pie, remember, is this section here. But if they do not like ice cream, that means they like only pie and cake. So because of that qualifier, we can actually fill the six in here. We're then told that 18 people like cake and ice cream, but not pie. So cake and ice cream, again, is this whole section here. But if they don't like pie, then we can fill 18 people in here, like only cake and ice cream. And then we have 20 people who like pie and ice cream. So pie and ice cream is this section here. But if they do not like cake, then we can fill those 20 people in there. 
Now, we don't have enough information to fill out how many people like pie only or ice cream only or cake only. Even though there are 74 people within the pie circle, because of this variable, I'm not sure how many people I can fill in here. So this is the one type of question where we have to go about it a slightly different way. Because I know that each element within the universal set can only be counted one time, I know that altogether I'm going to have 100 elements within that universal set. If I add up all of the people in the pie category, plus all of the people in the ice cream category, plus all of the people in the cake category, that's going to come to way over 100 because we can see, for example, that these 20 people were counted twice, once for pie and once for ice cream, but I only want to count them once. So I'm going to remove one group of that 20. Same thing with this six. These people here were counted for both pie and cake. I only want to count them once, so I'm going to remove one of them. And then same thing here. These people were counted for ice cream and cake. I only want to count them once. So because each of those people were counted twice, Within here, I'm going to remove one group of each of them. And then these people in the very middle were counted for pie and ice cream and cake. They were counted three times. I only want to count them once. So I'm going to remove two of them. And now this is going to equal 100. I have an algebraic equation that we can solve. So if we combine all of our like terms here, we're going to end up with 174 minus 2n. And then I'm going to isolate n by removing any pieces that we are adding or subtracting. So we can subtract 174. And then in order to get rid of that negative 2 coefficient, we're going to divide each side by that negative 2. Negative 2 divided by negative 2 leaves me with 1n, and then negative 74 divided by negative 2 becomes a positive 37. And again, n represents a natural number. It doesn't make sense to have negative numbers of people in here or fractions or decimals numbers of people. So this has to be a positive whole number. So if you don't get a positive whole number, go back and check your work. There's probably a problem somewhere in it. And so in the end, we have 37 people who like all three desserts. Now that we know there's 37 people here, you can actually f figure out the number of people who like pie only or ice cream only or cake only. And when you total everyone up, because there is no complement in this particular question, we should have 100 people within that diagram.